Today's wild animal encounter tale is one of the most bizarre and heartbreaking we've ever told, and it's about Timothy Treadwell, commonly known as the Grizzly Man, and his lover, Amy Hewen. During the fall of 2003, they were attacked by a wild grizzly bear in Alaska. In this video, we will look at the terrible circumstances that led to the deaths of Timothy Treadwell and Amy Hewen, as well as the errors that contributed to their deaths and the death of the bear who murdered them. Timothy Treadwell, better known as Timothy Dexter, was born in 1957 in New York. He had a difficult childhood and finally relocated to Long Beach, California to pursue college. Timothy acquired a heroin addiction at this time, according to his book Among Grizzlies, and his partying led to his expulsion from college. He was badly addicted to cocaine and heroin by the late 1980s, working in bars and attempting to become an actor. He suffered a near-fatal overdose and recognized he needed to find a new addiction to replace his previous ones, so he turned to bears. Timothy would spend the next 13 years traveling to Katmai National Park in Alaska to study and engage with wild brown bears, popularly known as grizzlies. With the passage of time, he came to see himself as a bear whisperer, and he rose to prominence as an eco-warrior and animal defender. Every summer, he would travel into bear country and live among them, also carrying a video camera to capture himself interacting with the bears, sometimes too intimately. As a sort of communication, he would often chat and sing to them, his endearing charisma and seeming bravery caused audiences to regard him as a genius, although he had no professional training and was an amateur who took risks that no one should ever take. The fact is that dealing with bears or other wild and dangerous creatures, it is critical to remain grounded in reality, otherwise death is just one misstep away. The Alaskan brown bear is one of the world's biggest predators, with mature males weighing up to 360 kilograms and reaching 3 meters tall on two legs. Brown bears are not normally violent towards people, despite their large size and intimidating attitude, unless they feel threatened or are hungry so that they consider humans a meal. The second case is highly uncommon. There are chances of being attacked by a bear around 1 in 2.1 million, and no one has ever been killed by a bear in Katmai National Park's 85-year existence prior to this incident. Timothy made the mistake of thinking he didn't need bear spray to keep safe among these creatures. Another error he made was that his regular involvement with the bears led them to get acclimated to humans, which meant they lost all fear of humans and may even learn to scavenge food from them. Timothy thought the animals regarded him as a buddy and a fellow bear, rather than as a human and possible food source. Allowing his unskilled and defenseless girlfriend to assume the same was the last and most catastrophic error. Timothy was infatuated with bears, but Amy Hewen was not. She wrote in her notebooks that the bear scared her, but she wanted to spend time with him and appreciate the natural beauty. The eventual outcome of these errors was devastating. The terrible murders of Timothy and Amy were recorded on video when a grizzly bear attacked their tent. It started on September 9, 2003, one week before their terrible death. A guy called Willie Fulton flew Timothy and Amy into the park. They planned to take one more campy trip to watch and document the bears before winter set in and the bears hibernated. This was also a risky decision since coming so late in the season meant that food was sparse and that the bears were more likely to be hungry and hostile. Regardless, Timothy and Amy camped out in the Alaskan tundra and waited. The video footage found from their camp subsequently shows them interacting with numerous bears during that week, including one large and cranky animal Timothy dubbed Ollie, the old grumpy bear. This is the bear that subsequently attacked and killed both of them on October 5th, 2003. Everything we know about that night is based on information from a six-minute tape taken during the assault, which has never been disclosed to the public and is unlikely to be, owing to its gruesome nature. The recording is simply audio since the lens cover was not removed, and it starts after the assault has already begun. Amy's voice can be heard, astonished and wondering whether the bear is still out there. Timothy is said to have been outdoors at this moment facing the bear. We then hear Timothy yell to Amy, Get out of here! I'm being killed out here! Amy unzipped the tent, rushing to the aid of her partner, who was being assaulted by the bear. We can hear her screams as she and Tim fend against the enormous beast. The wind and rain can be heard on the tape, followed by Amy asking Tim to act dead, play dead, probably in an effort to deceive the bear into abandoning its assault. This seemed to work on some level, as the bear backs off, presumably owing to all the noise and yelling. It does not, however, leave them alone for long. After a brief period, the bear reappears and seems to attack with more vigor. Tim can be heard screaming in agony and yelling that acting dead isn't working. 
Tim begged Amy to smash the bear with a frying pan during the assault because he was in excruciating agony. Amy shouted repeatedly for the bear to go and Tim to fight back. As the shouts and commotion died down, it is believed that the bear dragged Timothy farther into the woods to complete its meal. The following morning, when the remains were discovered, they were mutilated and strewn. When the pilot flew over to pick up Timothy and Amy the following day, he observed a big grizzly bear consuming their corpses. He notified the park officials who assisted him in locating the remains and killing the bear responsible. This is a heartbreaking tragedy, but it should serve as a warning that bears are wild creatures who must be handled with care and respect.